everyone, um, it's Jessica and for today's video I thought I'd talk a bit more about my actual degree. So for those of you who don't know, I study maths here at Oxford. That is a three or four year course depending on what you decide and you can decide that later on and I study straight maths. For today I wanted to concentrate on talking about how I decided I wanted to do maths um, and how I went about applying, so like my top application tips for people applying to Oxford to do maths. Like in general, when I started university, I found that the step up um, is quite large. But not only that, I found the style of learning um, really different. And there's a massive distinction between university maths and school maths, because at school, it's often the case that you're taught methods or taught ways to calculate things um, and you just apply those methods again and again um, on different questions that are basically the same but with different numbers swapped in. The way that you study maths at university is very different. A good way to illustrate this is in all our university exams we don't need or get to bring a calculator and I think bringing a calculator wouldn't even help that much at all. Um, it's often like State and prove a theorem might be a very common question um, in a like university maths exam. And you often find like in lectures, you're doing a lot more writing than you'd expect. Obviously in some courses there are a lot of calculations, but a lot of the lectures will often be you copying down like a definition, a theorem, and then a proof of it. Um, so it is surprisingly a large amount of writing. So I want to talk about like the main differences between school and university maths first. I think that might help people see like whether it's something that they'd be interested in or not. Particularly if like some people might find that um, they don't enjoy maths at school as much but like a maths degree still might be the option for them. I kind of knew I wanted to do maths at an early-ish age. Um, so from like 15 onwards I think I was pretty convinced I wanted to do a maths degree. Um, I think it's one of the subjects that it's very easy for you to get involved in extracurricular activities um, surrounding maths, particularly in the UK. We have the UKMT maths competitions, um, and so they run things like team challenges, um, and there are just lots of challenges, competitions, um, lectures um, on maths that I think you can really take advantage of, and it made me realise like this is the subject that I wanted to do. So if you are wanting to apply to Oxford to do maths or in general apply to university to do maths and Oxford might be one of your choices, i definitely say um, one of the big questions in terms of maths degrees is um, why Oxford or Cambridge? I don't know if you guys know but you can only apply to one or the other and I'd say the degrees are pretty comparable but the application process is very different. So in my eyes, I definitely thought like um, the quality of the degree was the same. Um, so I personally prefer Oxford as a town much more to Cambridge. And um, I was actually lucky enough to do a summer school here when I was 15. Um, and I actually got to eat dinner in Christchurch um, during that. And then after that, I was sold. So that's why I applied to Christchurch, basically. And so that was like the main reason why I chose between the two. Um, I'd say like there are many other reasons that people may decide because the application processes between the two universities are very different and it's worth like definitely researching those. And I definitely like appreciated the Oxford application process in the sense that once you had your offer you could just concentrate on your A-levels. I definitely say like go where your heart lies kind of thing. If you see like a particular college in either university that you really love then that's the one for you I guess um, and Christchurch was definitely that for me so I'd like to talk a bit more about the Oxford application process I guess so it basically starts with you making your application in October sitting the mat exam in November and you get invited to interviews in December having talked to like some admissions people I'm pretty sure that it's everyone sits the mat exam who applies to Oxford to do maths and then 50% of those roughly get invited to interview and um, from that one in three get an offer and once you've got an offer nearly everyone makes their offer um, and gets in. 
and um, the standard offer in Oxford is A star, A star, A, with the A stars in maths and further maths, and the A can be in anything else. So firstly is the personal statement, um, and in that I think the main thing is to show your interest in maths outside school and your classes and things that you have to do. So some of the things that I did and things that I think are great ways um, to show your interest is reading books is always a classic one. Um, I think a lot of people read like Fermat's Last Theorem, like Ian Stewart books. Um, so he writes a lot of books like The 19 Equations That Changed the World. Alex Bellos is also um, a popular one. I think a really great great way to see whether maths is a degree for you or in general like show your interest in maths is if you get the chance being able to do a maths summer school is a really great way to experience what it's like to study maths full time um, and sh it shows that you're really interested in maths to commit to another week of it so one of the summer schools that they run at Oxford is the unique summer school spelt U-N-I-Q um, and therefore um, state school students and you can make an application and they literally do every pretty much every degree that's offered at Oxford and it's a really great way to see what the degree is like you get taught by um, the Oxford University like lecturers um, and I actually worked on that summer school last year um, on the maths and data summer school and it's a lot of fun like there are social activities in the evenings um, loads of things to get involved with and the lectures are great and the like problems are really interesting I was actually lucky enough to do another summer school when I was in year 12 which was run by um, Eton College and they run um, a summer school in a number of different subjects for around 10 days during the summer so that one is like costs some amount of money and it's actually my school that um, offered to help me make an application to that summer school which is how I heard of it but it's definitely one worth looking at and the unique summer schools they are completely free um, and I'm pretty sure Sutton Trust also runs similar summer schools at Oxford, Cambridge, um, Warwick, I think, and some other universities. If you get the chance to do a summer school, I think it's a really great experience. Um, definitely the unique summer school was a lot of fun. I had a great time on it when I was working on it, so I would definitely recommend it to anyone in general, regardless of what degree they're interested in doing. Um, it's a great way to experience Oxford as well. On top of that, I definitely say within school there are like a great number of ways to show that you're interested in maths. One of the things I think is quite easy to do is um, helping younger years in the maths lessons or even setting up your own club um, to teach like younger years maths that isn't taught in classes, um, which is something that I did in my last two years of school and I really enjoyed that. Those are the ways that like I'd say I found were helpful in deciding um, where the maths was a degree to do for me and helped me show that I was interested in maths in my personal statement. So in terms of application tips for um, the second part of the application, which is the MAT, which will sit in November. So I definitely say don't leave it too late. Like your school will start telling you about writing your personal statement at the end of year 12. And if you know you want to apply to Oxford and you know you want to study maths, say studying for the maths is worthwhile and Preparing for it is really, really helpful. So I'd say um, during the summer of year 12 is definitely the time to start thinking about it. So I definitely think you can prepare or get used to the exam technique for the MAT. Over the summer, you can kind of like get all your resources together, set out a timetable of how you want to um, plan your revision for it because November is quite early on in the year in year 13 so once school starts it does get very busy so I would say aim to do all the past papers which are all online um, and that's just really great practice because it gets you used to the format of the exam um, which is like 10 multiple choice questions and then a number of long answer questions. The way I did it was just made sure I knew all the content by a certain point um, and then did a couple past papers over summer to see how I found it. They are hard papers in terms of you're not going to get full marks, or maybe you will, but like in general, people don't get full marks in it. You can get better at it really quickly, so don't be disheartened if you can't do any of the problems. So you might try the first few questions in a paper and not really get them at all, and that might be because you don't know the content, or it might be because um, you're not used to the style of the question, but practicing it is massively helpful. So finally, um, the last stage of the application process is the interview. 
and in terms of tips for that I guess um, if you get the chance to practice talking out loud through a problem with another person that's really helpful and if you could ask your school if it's possible to an, arrange an interview with one of the teachers or something I think that's always really helpful but the main thing is getting used to talking out loud and um, the interview process like getting to stay at Oxford is always really enjoyable no point stressing too much about it and staying in your room all the time I definitely say that um, but the interviews have already passed but I definitely say like you can prepare to some extent for them by getting used to the process of talking out loud and and in particular um, even if it's just your ideas so you, they're not expecting you to come out with a fully formed solution straight away they're expecting you to say if you're given this problem what's your initial reaction and then go from there and then the interviewer is also there to help you so that would be my advice on interviews i hope you enjoyed this video about um deciding whether an oxford maths degree is for you and application help for applying to oxford for maths um yeah hope you guys enjoy